Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. I'm driving home from work. Um, today is Thursday, which is AKA my Friday. Tomorrow morning, uh, I'll be dropping my kids off at school and I'll be heading over to uh, Bailey meet and greet signing at Cricket Wireless. Um, that is literally two minutes from my house. Um, when there used to be a grocery store in that complex, that was the closest uh, grocery store that, that uh, next to my house is like how close it, it realistically is. Um, but uh, today on Twitter, I saw that Ken Shamrock says that he signed a WWE uh, Legends deal, um, which is going to open the door for WWE uh, more than likely. When I think of Ken Shamrock, they'll probably be having him like sign wrestling cards, making his own wrestling cards, um, making a few uh, Mattel figures here and there along the way. Um, Ken Shamrock, I, I, he didn't have a huge time in, in WWF. I think he was only from like 1997 uh, to 2000. I think they brought him in. Um, at WrestleMania to be the special guest referee for the Stone Cold Steve Austin um, versus Bret the Hitman Hart uh, submission match. Uh, and then from there, he, he joined the main roster. Um, he was a really good wrestler. I, I think that WWE um, F wanted to like keep his gimmick alive of being the most dangerous man uh, that there was out there. Um, the only problem is I think it would have worked a lot better. Ken Shamrock was definitely one of the biggest names that they brought in, but you know, bringing in the names like uh, Dan Severn and uh, Steve Blackman, there was just too many of these uh, like mixed, uh, mixed martial arts guys uh, in there at one time. And when they had um, you know Dan Severn versus Ken Shamrock you know, as a a wrestling match they never really could find a way to, to have a payoff um that, that, that for one guy to lose but still be strong uh in the company um so i i really felt that you know he sort of got pinched into a corner where um you know he was like this badass who could beat anybody up but like they they would almost make him like have dumb decisions inside of the ring uh, that ended up costing him the match that was like, oh, he had him, but, but you know, the heel was just this much smarter than he was and he was able to pull it out. Um, I, I think that it would be really, really cool for Ken Shamrock to be a WWE Hall of Famer. He didn't have the biggest run of all time. Uh, he was a special guest referee in what a lot of people think is one of the greatest WrestleMania, let alone wrestling matches that there's ever been with that, that, that uh, Stone Cold one with uh, Brett. That's uh, WrestleMania 13, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I get the you know, 11, 12, 13 kind of mixed up sometimes right there. Um, that was kind of like a weird era for the WWE um, F at that time. But uh, he, you know, he main evented um, the Degeneration X in your house pay per view. Uh, which was right after uh, the Survivor Series uh, in 1997 when Brett left and there was a lot of focus on the company um, and uh, you know it was him against Shawn Michaels. He didn't pull out the big win, but I think that was one of the few main event matches he had. You know, he was a part of the team of Team Austin or Team WWF at the uh, Canadian Stampede. Um, where it was a multi-man, eight-man tag. I just watched that a, a few months ago, and he really added fuel to the fire for, for that team at that time. Um, other than that, I mean, you, you really think of him being co-intercontinental and tag team champions at the time with the uh, the, the corporation or the, the corporate ministry. I, I think he was in the ministry. I, they, in my mind, it would kind of be a little bit of him being in there as I say it but I, I definitely remember him being in the corporation uh, with Vince and boss man Shane um, you know and, and he was able to win the Intercontinental title he won that in a tournament on Monday Night Raw um, that was a, a memorable thing for him for him to win that um, him being tag champ with boss man I honestly just remember him holding the belt. I don't remember any feud they had. I don't remember when they won it. I don't remember when they lost it. But um, Ken Shamrock, he's already a TNA Hall of Famer. A big, real sort of surprise. He was 
<coughs> the first TNA champion in 2002. Um, they brought him in, and they, they, I think they really thought, everybody thought that Jarrett was going to be the champion. Jarrett was the co-owner of the company. Um, maybe it would be a little bit weird if the guy running the company just had the belt all the time, and did he just open this company just to be champion? Um, so I think they got Shamrock for the name value. Um, for what he had done in UFC and people just really believing that he would be an ass, like an ass kicker. I don't really remember his run as champion other than winning the, the, uh, the, the belt on the first show. Um, you know, he got put into the Hall of Fame for TNA and as a real big surprise, I think it happened like around 2017, 18, somewhere in there. Um, the Rock did his induction intro speech, not in person, uh, but he sent a video talking about how, you know, they were friends and how they were, uh, even though they, they wasn't in TNA, it was in the WWF, um, they had a rivalry um, over the Intercontinental Championship. I remember the uh, Steel Cage match um, where it was Mankind, The Rock, and um, Ken Shamrock. I can't remember if it was, a, I think it was for a number one contenders match for the title. It might have been for the Intercontinental title. I don't remember it all that well. I just remember um, Mankind trying to, to sneak out over the top of the cage. And I think Rock was able to get the pinfall or submission before Mankind was actually able to, to touch the floor. But it was a really, really good match. I think that's also Ken Shamrock takes one of the best unprotected chair shots to the face. If it's not in that match, just give it to him and trust him. Like, the guy just put his face out there and just said, hit me as hard as you fucking can, and the rock swings it like a baseball bat. Just boom, King Griffey Jr. style, slugfest right over the fence. See you later. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'll tell you the truth. I, I, I've been wrong before. I remember Tonka signed his deal. Tonka got, you know, some Mattel action figures. He got some wrestling cards. Um, and he was at WrestleMania 32 in the, uh, the, the um, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. But, I mean, I really thought that Tonka was going to go into the Hall of Fame, and that's why they wanted him to sign that Legends deal. I think they just need so many Legends under contract uh, to make the card, you got to be thinking that, you know, the guys that they already have under Legends deal, they've already had so many figures. Uh, how many Mattel figures can they make? So they got to go out and sign people. But the people that they're signing right now, I mean, I like looking at action figures. I like, you know, listening to the Major Brothers talk about it. But I don't really know anybody running out to buy a Ken Shamrock figure or a Victoria figure or... Um, I can't remember there was other another name that signed the Legends deal as of late. Uh, oh, Jesse Ventura um, was the other one. Uh, all three of those names in my mind deserve their spot in the WWE Hall of Fame. Victoria was an awesome wrestler. Uh, oh, I, I guess I was wrong. Jesse's already in the Hall of Fame after making that video the other day. But uh, I would be really, really surprised. You know, especially with like the sort of like the TKO UFC. You know, crossover uh, with this um, upcoming WrestleMania being in Las Vegas. I, I, well, they always would say that Shamrock was billed as being from Sacramento, California uh, during his run in WWF. But I honestly think, if I remember right, I think he lives in Las Vegas. Cut down on the travel cost, just bring him in. I, I think it'd be really, really cool. I think it would be, he'd easily be the first WWE and UFC Hall of Famer. I don't think Brock is in yet. Brock will be in there someday when he wants to. I don't think they would do it without him. But uh, to be the first to say that you beat Brock to it, I take it. Peace out.